Hi, I'm Morgan Hines. I'm a senior reporter with Focuswire, and I'm here in the Focuswire studio at the Focusrite conference with Ronen Ben Ami, the co founder and risk, chief risk officer at Just. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for being here. We're so happy to have you, and we're looking forward to learning a little bit more about Just. Thank you. Happy to be here. Great. So let's dive right in. I know that you've been with us before. And so since you've done a studio interview, I'd love if you give us a little update on how things have been. Yeah. So it's been an exciting time here at Just. We're really growing uh, both our, on the commercial side, bringing in more and more customers, showing why our product is so different in the market, okay. as well as on the product side. We've really been advancing the product to next stages, growing in different markets, uh, I'm really excited to see that we've grown into the Latin American market wow. recently and really adapting our solution for that market has been really fun to see, as well as uh, we've gone into card present chargebacks. Okay. We've always been in on the online space dealing with card not present transactions. Okay. And we've moved over to the card present where it's actually brick and mortar physical stores. There's also chargebacks happening there. So been able to adapt the solution for that space as well. That sounds exciting. So was that part of how you adapted your strategy while breaking into the Latin American market or is this different? It was two opportunities that okay. we saw. Um, we saw the Latin American opportunity knocking at our door and saw that we can adapt our solution there as well as it was with merchants that were live with us on the card not present side said, can you do something for us for our physical stores? And we were able to adapt the solution and are, we're seeing great results there as well. That's great. Can you give me a little bit of detail about that? Yeah, for sure. So basically in the online space is where the majority of chargebacks happen today. Okay. The ratios are a lot higher there. Uh, the invalid claims that a, that a customer can make really happen in that space. But what's interesting is that in the, the card present space and physical stores, the, still the majority of transactions mm -hmm. still happen in that space. Okay. And because of that, there are still chargebacks there. The proof of evidence that we have to provide in that space is different than what we have to provide in the card not present space. So we had to adapt the evidence that we provide, our integrations and where we're pulling the evidence from is different in that space. Got it. So that's really interesting. So with that in mind, can you tell me a little bit about like what the true cost of chargebacks is to travel companies? Oh, for sure. So uh, it's actually interesting because we, we did a recent survey uh, in, for merchants in, uh, in travel space and other, uh, other uh, industries. And what we saw in the travel space specifically is that 70% of travel and, uh, and uh, merchants are saying that they, they have 1% or more of a ratio of chargebacks to their actual transactions. Okay. But what's interesting is that's based off of their revenue. And when you look at chargebacks, you really need to look at your you know, the, 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 your net income. Okay. Because when you lose a chargeback, you're not only losing the actual margin on the transaction, you're losing the entire amount. So when you look at your net income, that 1%, if your margins are low on each transaction, that can be 5, 10, and in some industries, 25%. Wow. That's, that's really fascinating. And what kind of trends are you seeing right now in the kind of chargeback space, if that's, I don't know what the right way to call it, but do you know what I mean? Like, what kind of trends are you seeing amongst travel companies specifically in dealing with chargebacks? Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of interesting trends in the travel space today. I would mention two that I think are really interesting. The first is that travel merchants, based on our survey, said that they're only getting to, uh, the majority are saying that they're only getting to about 30% of their chargebacks. Okay. So that means 70% of the chargebacks are just being left on the table. They're not even trying to recover those funds. They don't wow. have the time. And something else that's interesting is that we, it, it also showed that 63% of the travel merchants are only at a 30% recovery rate of the chargebacks that they're fighting, which is a lot lower than what we're seeing with our results. So wow. there's both a place to improve the actual results as well as handle more cases okay. in this space. Interesting. And, you know, I, I think machine learning and artificial intelligence has been such a big topic this year. How do you see that being incorporated into this kind of chargeback environment? Do you think it'll help? Will it th that be something you'll be able to integrate into your strategy? Tell me more about that. Yeah, great. So, so A, that is the core of, of Just, yeah. being a technology-first solution. And why we really see why that's so important is 
Chargebacks are a growing problem, especially these friendly fraud or illegitimate chargebacks. Uh, Visa said back in 2022 that in most industries, chargebacks and the friendly fraud types of chargebacks are growing about 20 to 30 percent on a yearly basis. And most merchants are still dealing with them in a manual way. So it's not scalable over time. You're just going to keep growing a team larger and larger to handle them, or you're going to leave the cases on the table as a travel merchant. So what we we really see is, A, the ability to use technology to automate the process so we can get to all the cases, and also to tailor the solution for the specific merchant. But also machine learning can be used to optimize the results. Okay. So what we really see is when you f- we find subsections of a char- of a chargeback solution for a merchant, we'll see their win rate is lower in a specific category, like a specific specific reason code. It could be a specific issuer that's responding to their evidence, and then we can run A/B tests at scale on those weak spots and improve the solution over time. So I'd love, as we near the end of 2023, if you could kind of give me a look at what your priorities are for 2024. What are you most looking forward to? Any challenges you see upcoming? Yeah, so 2023 has been really exciting, seeing how we're showing our differentiators in the market, improving ourselves and growing our customer base. Uh, I'm really excited in 2024 to continue growing, both with our direct customers and go, continue to grow into different markets. As we've seen, we can grow into different markets and adapt our solution for those markets, yeah. as well as continue to grow our partnerships. We've seen a really strong increase in partnerships in 2023, and we want to continue to grow that both with payment service providers as well as with anti-fraud solutions. Providing our solutions together hand in hand has been a really great success, uh, and we want to continue to grow that. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us in the FocusWire studio, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.